friends, this is Alexis Percival with Vinquisition, where I talk about anything that interests me about wine, culture, uh, and anything wine related really. So I was out last night and I had a pretty terrible experience at a restaurant and it got me thinking this morning about how much I wanted to talk about uh, what happened to me and what we could all learn from that experience. So. This is about the do's and don'ts of wine service for both guests and for the servers, bartenders, whomever, songs as well. So a couple thoughts. Respect goes both ways. And I think it's really important that for as hospitality people, we need to respect the guests because they're spending their money with us and their time and um, sharing what is usually um, uh, an experience with their friends or even if it's by themselves. We need to honor that. But as guests, we also have a responsibility to not be jerks. And in particular with wine service, and I'll probably do more than one um, of these videos because there's so much material there. Um, but I will spill the tea on what happened to me last night because I'm still very irked about it. <laughs> um, but a couple of things. If you are selecting from the by the glass list, you can absolutely ask for a taste of the wine beforehand. So feel free to say, hey, I'm looking at that Sancerre, for example, but I, is it possible for you to pour me a taste first? Unless it's forbidden by management, most restaurants or wine bars are happy to do that for you before you commit to the glass. It's only like a, a half of an ounce of wine, right? So it's just a little splash. You can do a little cheeky role play here about it. Say, can I have a splash? Sure. How do you feel about it? Mm, you know what? I don't actually care for it. I'm glad I tasted it. Okay, now, if I'm the server or the som or the bartender, I'm not going to waste any more time running back and forth with different bottles. So I might go back behind the bar, grab two bottles that I think are tangentially related to the one that they initially suggested so that I don't have to make a million trips back and forth. Okay, so that's one thing that you can do. That's perfectly fine and I think totally acceptable um, for uh, both the guest and the server to do. However, if you are the type of customer that says, well, I want to taste these five wines, I'll probably go with the first one, but I want to taste all the others. Well, you know, that's nice for you, but you're wasting product, you're wasting the time of the server, um, especially when you know that you've all, they already did their job. They already got you the glass of wine that you want. And so unless it's totally dead quiet and you have a great relationship with the, the restaurant, it's really not the best thing to do during service. Um, that's one thought, and I think that could be a real, um, it's disrespectful to the server or the song. Um, I would say also as a guest, educate yourself on what it is that you like, and you can ask your server, how would you describe this wine? I really love it. So that the next time you go to order, you have useful vocabulary to be able to order a wine. So I would say it's like triangulating on a map three pieces of information that are useful and different. So I wouldn't say full-bodied, big, and high alcohol, because essentially those all mean very much the same thing. So while it's helpful, it's not as helpful as it could be. So if you said, I like full-bodied, very tannic, and fruit-forward red wines, great. That's going to give your server even more information to be able to bring you or make suggestions about what you might like. And again, like I said, it's the server's job to say, hey, this is how I would describe that wine. So next time you go out, this is the vocabulary that we will generally use to get you where you want to go. This works for bottle suggestions as well. And I would say sometimes your attitude just going out, both as the person who is doing the going out and the hospitality person who is receiving you, you, we should all expect to have fun. You know, I never go into a restaurant looking for problems. And frankly, I'm one of those people that can go in and pretty much deduce everything that's working and not working at a restaurant um, just because I can't help but notice those things. And I still never go out looking for a problem. I'm going out to have a good time, to put my money into this business. I'm not looking to be a jerk. And I think that also as hospitality people, we can't look at server, at, excuse me, at staff as the enemy, like they're going to be incompetent or they're not going to know. Um, Respect goes both ways, right? And works for everyone that way. And, you know, let's not be snarky. Uh, I think it's not cool to have the, like we're, 
we're both here to learn from each other. And I think that it's one thing to educate each other, um, but it's not cool to be, to teach someone a lesson. You know, uh, that attitude just kind of sucks. Um, so that's my first spiel about restaurant service and interaction. I'm sure I have a lot more to say about this, but the gossip from last night, I won't spill on where I was because I think that's crappy. If you want to criticize a restaurant, send them an email. You don't need to do it on a public forum uh, unless it was really dreadful. And there was no chance for them to make amends. In my case, I was out with my husband to a place I hadn't been before. And um, he was drinking the Bordeaux that was by the glass. The first glass was fine. We also know the producer of the wine and know the wine well, so we had an expectation. Got a second glass, and as he always does, he, you know, I wasn't drinking the same glass, so I had a taste of it. Something was off, and I, it, I could tell the bottle had just been opened, and I said, it's corked. And he took it back from me, and he said, oh, you're right. Now, there's different levels of being corked, and when a bottle is fresh, it, you, it can seem a little off, but you, it's not totally like basement uh, wet paper bag. And um, in this case, I, I thought to myself, in an hour, this is going to be fully corked, and it's going to be gross. So at any rate, we flag down the server. He takes it behind the bar. He takes it. He comes back and says, uh, it's not corked, but I can get you something else. Totally the wrong response, right? That's not the response. <laughs> That's just not the response. Um, I wasn't going to argue. I'm polite about these things. And I, we, my, but my husband said, um, well, then I don't, then no, I'm good. I don't, I don't want another glass of wine. And so not only was that glass comped, course we didn't drink any of it so you don't want to eat or drink something and then complain about it and then we didn't get another glass of wine so they lost the sale and they lost that glass of wine and moreover by arguing or not arguing but counterpointing me I think they're going to go on to serve a, a turned shitty bottle of wine afterwards to be honest with you so the point is just why and I left feeling like I had done something wrong, like I was a problem customer. They obviously were not stoked about our interaction either, and now I'm never going to go back to that place. So definitely not the right uh, way to do it, and what I would have suggested would be, especially for by the glass, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm going to set it aside and we'll taste it in a little bit and see you know, if it's truly bad. I'm going to open a fresh bottle for you, because it's by the glass, they're going to open another bottle anyway. So. Sometimes it's just not worth pushing back. Trust me, I'm on both sides of this these days. And um, yeah, it could have gone so much better with just a few simple rules. So um, stay tuned. I'll be doing more of these. And feel free, please, to put in the comments things that you'd like me to talk about. I know, you know, dining out, we all have stories and, um, and questions. So please feel free to forward them to me. And I'll see you next time on the Vintage.